Hey guys, Dr. Alex, the Punch Doctor here. And today I'm gonna to take a look at Julian Jackson's punch mechanics. Julian Jackson had great power generating mechanics through lots of punches with bad intentions and ended his career with an 89% knockout ratio. I'm gonna briefly go over the anatomy and concepts around punching power, then take a look at some clips. If you'd like a more in-depth explanation, please watch my Kinetic Integrated Mechanics reference video. The link for that is in the description. Let's review three concepts the stretch shortening cycle, kinetic chains, and the four punch phases. The stretch shortening cycle consists of a quick stretch prior to a muscle contraction to increase the power of that contraction. You'll see this in a golf swing or when you dip down before you jump. This quick stretch primes the muscle for a more violent contraction. The same phenomenon is utilized by power punchers to power their punch. First in their legs to rotate their hips, then in their torso and arm utilizing the cross body kinetic chains. This creates a cascade of stretch shortening cycles that starts in the hips, allows the body and arm to accelerate to maximize velocity of the fist at impact. This directly connects the hips and arm for a stronger, more coordinated punch. The missing link in a lot of weaker punchers is poor utilization of these cross body chains. Julian creates a lot of stretch in these chains that he can really contract violently on as you'll see in the clips. These important crossbody chains include the spiral line, front functional line, and the arm lines. These lines connect the pelvis to the shoulder and the arm all the way to the fist. I've broken the punch down into four main phases. Load, explode, accelerate, and follow through. First, you load elastic muscle energy into your hips. This is typically done through lowering your center of gravity or through movement. Explode phase is a release of this loaded elastic muscle energy with a contraction that powers the hips into rotation. This then stretches the cross body chains and allows a cascade of accelerating stretch shortening cycles through the torso and into the arm all the way until impact, where you transfer your weight into and through your target for the follow through. If you'd like a more detailed explanation, please check out my reference video. The link for that is in the description. Additionally, if you want to learn how you can use these mechanics to maximize your own punching power, my program, The Power Punching Blueprint, can teach you how. The Power Punching Blueprint is an A to Z program that will rebuild your movement patterns with drills and exercises designed to incorporate these powerful mechanics into your punch. You might not be able to generate the kind of power that Julian Jackson can. However, you can certainly maximize your own punching power to reach your maximum potential. If you'd like to learn more or buy the Power Punching Blueprint today, you can check it out at howtopunchharder.com. Let's get into the clips. Here's a right hand against Francisco de Jesus I want to show you. That follows all of the mechanics that I talk about. We'll watch it in slow motion and then we'll watch an overhead view where you can really see his hips move independently from his torso. So you're going to see his weight come down. As his right arm is coming back to stretch his crossbody chains, weight's coming down. Now he pushes his hip forward into rotation and stretches those crossbody chains like a baseball pitcher. His whole body is turning now. His arm is coming as well and makes impact. Then he's able to follow it up with a left hook. Now let's watch the overhead view. You're going to see Julian's weight come down as he throws this jab. Now look at his belt line. That weight comes down. And look at his trunks rotate relative to his torso. See that? Creating stretch in those crossbody chains, in the spiral line, in the front functional line, that he can then contract off of to power his torso into rotation and his arm. His arm is still coming back. His torso is going forward creating stretch between his torso and his arm. And now his arm picks up the contraction and accelerates forward until impact. And now his weight is on his left leg. He's able to use that, that weight to power his hips into rotation. You see his arm coming back while his hips are rotating. And now that arm comes forward and lands. Weight comes down on his back foot right there. He pushes off, turns his hips into rotation, stretching those cross body chains. Torso's moving, arm is coming back, creating stretch between the torso and arm. He contracts those muscles and lands. Let's take a look at this right hook and straight right from Julian.
Now we'll go frame by frame. So Julian's weight comes down, loading his tissues, pushes his hips into rotation while his arm is coming back, stretching those crossbody chains. His hips are rotating before his torso really starts to rotate. If you can see that. His hips are rotating relative to his torso. Now his torso starts speeding up and his arm starts moving. Everything's accelerating until impact. Now he resets. And you'll see his weight come down here as his hips begin to turn. So his hips are turning, creating stretch in the crossbody chains. His torso starts turning, his arm follows behind that, makes impact, knocks down Francisco. Now I want you to see how his arm moves in an arc. Remember, it's, it's a straight punch, but it's not a linear punch. It's moving with a downward trajectory and he lands with shearing force. And what that does in the downward trajectory is gonna recruit more muscles than just his pec for a larger impact and more stability at impact. Now we'll watch this other view and you'll see his hips rotate independently from his torso as his weight comes down, right there. Now he pushes off and naturally when you push off, it's gonna create just a little bit more stretch than he can contract off of more violently to power everything into rotation. And look at the trajectory of the arm. We'll watch it one more time. Weight's coming down and his hips are rotating at the same time. Then he pushes off and invariably, that's gonna create a little bit more stretch because the torso has to catch up really forcing things into rotation right there. Arm is coming, arc trajectory, impact, follow through. Weight comes down while the hips are rotating. The push off will increase the momentary stretch and contraction for the cross body chains between the hips and the torso. Everything follows, big impact. Weight comes down, big push off, everything follows chain of events and here it is just a little bit slower you can really see all the phases i want to show you julian jackson versus buster drayton now i've watched a lot of julian jackson's fights in preparation for this video and almost all of his punches have excellent mechanics powerful mechanics behind them just look at how he's ripping these shots each one is meant to do damage. And intention is a big part of success in maximizing punching power. Let's take a look at the two punches before the knockdown. And you're gonna see both have huge hip rotation independent of torso rotation. So remember, we're creating a stretch shortening cycle between the hips and the torso and between the torso and the arm. So let's look at this right hand. Huge rotation independent from the torso. You see that? What's that doing? It's creating a huge stretch between the hips and the torso in those crossbody chains. That quick stretch is gonna allow a more violent contraction. So as they stretch, they're primed for a contraction. The arm is coming back, increasing the stretch in the crossbody chains across the shoulder. Then the torso starts contracting and moving, and the arm. Everything moves together, big impact. It accelerates until impact. And then here's the left hook coming up here. You're going to see the same thing. Huge hip rotation relative to the torso. So of course there's a little bit of movement, but you can see that those hips rotating independently from the torso, right? Increasing that stretch in the cross body chains. Additionally, he's got his arm coming back. So he's creating stretch in the chains that cross his shoulder. So hip, torso, arm, acceleration, impact, and then follow through. We'll watch it one more time. Huge hip rotation, stretches the cross body chains between the hips and torso. Torso picks up the rotation, 
Arm lags behind a little bit, increasing the stretch there. Everything's accelerating. Impact, weight transfer past the center line, follow through. Big punch. Here's another view. You can see that big rotation in the hips. And look at his upper back. It's staying largely staying still relative to the hips. Look at the upper back and the hips. Right about here, he's reaching maximum stretch between his hips and his torso. Torso starts moving forward. Arm is still lagging behind. Arm picks up the contraction. Big impact. And you can see his arm. This is interesting. There's not a whole lot of acceleration in the elbow, right? That arm is moving kind of fixed. However, the shoulder position where that arm is back, it's in a very stable position. It's got nowhere to move as far as moving farther backward. So what that's going to do is creates a hard stop of the shoulder to prevent any sort of absorption there, power absorption or power leak. And you can try that. It's like the, the end position of a dumbbell fly. You know, when you let the arm go all the way back to the side, it kind of feels like there's a hard stop after a certain point, right? So that's the sort of anatomy that he's landing with, with that sort of hard stop without anywhere really for the arm to go. It can't go anywhere farther backwards. I mean, it can, but it's got a pretty hard stop there. So I just wanted to point that out. Alex Pereira does that occasionally as well. And we'll see another one, Julian Jackson versus Harold Graham, where he does the same thing. Let's take a look at Julian Jackson's knockout of Terry Norris. And there's a few punches here that, well, one punch does most of the damage. He's out on his feet there. And then, of course, a couple more finish him off. However, let's take a little bit of a closer look here. For the first big right hook, just like the other videos, we're going to see a lot of hip rotation independent from the torso. So right here you can see the hips rotating relative to the torso. And you can see where his back is. And it's stationary. I mean, it's moving a little bit. But it's not rotating with the hips. The hips are moving first. Creating stretch in those crossbody chains. Arm is coming back at the same time to create additional stretch between the arm and the torso. So in the crossbody chains that, that cross the shoulder, which is the front functional line and the superficial front arm line. So hips rotate, cause stretch between the hips and the torso. Arm is moving back relative to the torso, creates stretch between the torso and the arm. Then the torso starts moving along with the arm accelerates until impact. Then you're going to see the same thing with this left hook. In this case, the whole torso and the arm are turning to the left and the hips are kind of stay, staying stationary. See that? Creating stretch there in the torso. Then the hips rotate. Everything gets picked up. That one doesn't land that strongly. However, this last one, same thing. Arms coming back, and then there's a couple frames where the hips move relative to the torso. Create stretch in those crossbody chains. Torso starts contracting. Arm is still lagging. Arm picks up the contraction. Acceleration, impact. Big series of punches. Now, of course, this video would not be complete without the Harold Graham knockout. So we'll take a look at that in full speed. And we'll go frame by frame as well. This secondary view gives you a better idea of the mechanics involved. So we're going to look at that. Let's take it frame by frame. You're going to see, of course, a big hip rotation to start the motion while the right arm moves backwards. So already, he's starting to move his hips as his arm is coming back, creating a huge stretch in those chains. 
as the arm is coming back. Now the torso starts moving with the arm until impact. Notice his arm position. It starts all the way in horizontal abduction before it starts moving. That is to say, it's all the way back, like in the bottom position of a dumbbell fly. So he's creating a ton of stretch in that pec, in those crossbody chains that cross the shoulder. At the very last moment, right when he's about to make contact, you can see his arm start to move forward and accelerate relative to the torso. What he's doing is essentially transferring his weight from back to front right at that moment. We'll look at it one more time. Notice the arms start to come back as the hips begin to turn relative to the torso, right here. Hips are turning, arm is coming back, and, and look at his upper chest is stationary. While his hips are turning, now the torso starts to move. The arm has reached maximum stretch, and the arm starts to move with the torso. Right about here, the arm accelerates until impact. And then there's a follow through. Punches through his target. Huge punch. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember, if you want a more detailed explanation on all the mechanics, kinetic chains, and punch phases, please check out my reference video. The link is available in the description. And if you're interested in maximizing your own punching power with an A to Z program that will retrain your body to use all these mechanics, check out my program, The Power Punching Blueprint, available now at howtopunchharder.com. That's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.